Welcome to the Wildcat Watch, your weekly look at what's going on around Baker University. I'm Megan Pontius. This week, KMBU's one-on-one -on -one is focused on another faculty member who has announced she'll be leaving Baker at the end of the semester. Ashley Payne talks with Gwen Mellinger, the department chair of Mass Media and Visual Arts, about her time in Baldwin City and where she will go from here. You recently announced that you will be leaving Baker at the end of the semester. Mm -hmm. um, what ultimately led to that decision? I knew that if I stayed at Baker, I would be doing something different. I had just come to a point in my career where um, I was not wanting to continue to do the same thing over and over again. Um, I think it, the way that the cliche is that I'm looking for new challenges. But what I find is that even though that does sound like a cliche, it, it's true. Um, we need to be continually challenged. And I found an opportunity that will uh, provide me some opportunities to build new programs and do some things that I've done before, but also some things I haven't done before. How long have you been thinking about making this change? I would say a couple of years. I didn't want to completely give up teaching. And that was a huge part of the decision that I made um, to take the job that I did because I was going to be able to continue teaching. I was also going to be able to do curriculum development, uh, program building. I would have time for research um, and I would also be engaged as an administrator. So I'll be wearing a number of hats and I guess in, in, in some respects you might say it was kind of a cop out because I didn't have to uh, make a decision to not do any of those things anymore. Uh, I found a position where there's some of this, that, 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 you know. Where is this new position at? It will be at Xavier University in Cincinnati. And what made you choose Xavier? We talk about the importance of fit uh, and, and I think that, that when anyone looks for a job, uh, the part of the, the decision needs to be, do I fit in here? Is this the sort of place where I will be comfortable working? You know, do I like these people? Do I want to have a relationship with these people, um, you know, professional relationship with these people? And one of the things that was extremely attractive about this particular institution is their commitment to a liberal arts education and also to um, values and ethics as part of the liberal arts education. To see the entire one-on-one -on -one interview, go to youtube.com backslash BakerUmedia. With the school year winding down, blockbuster season is almost upon us. KNBU's Steven Stendabot gives us his take on what's playing at the cinemas in this week's commentary. The Evil Dead is a new horror movie from director Fide Alvarez. It is a remake of the classic 1981 movie of the same name. It's about a group of teenagers who go off into a cabin to help one of their friends go through detox. Once they get there, they accidentally release a demon that terrorizes them through the night. The story isn't much to scream about, but the death scenes are some of the best in modern horror. Shotguns, chainsaws, nail guns, hammers, shards of glass, and more are used in the bloody fun. I was disappointed, though, that the star of the original film, Bruce Campbell, didn't make a cameo. Still, I can't deny that this is one of the most terrifying films I've seen in years. I give it four chainsaws in the, to the knee out of five. I'm Steven Stindebach. The Evil Dead is With a new With the release of Evil Dead, we wondered what people would do in case of a zombie apocalypse. Here's Joe Pace in this week's Baker Beat. Hi, welcome to this week's edition of the Baker Beat. I'm Joe Pace. This week we're going to talk to Baker students to see what they would do if a zombie apocalypse broke out. What would be the first three things you would do if a zombie apocalypse were to break out? Well, I'd head to the nearest supermarket and stock up on supplies. Then I'd take that stuff back to my house, lock all my doors and windows, and start sharpening my swords. Swords. That is awesome. That is a good, that's a good approach. If a zombie apocalypse were to break out, what would be the first three things that you would do? Well, I would first um, say bye to my friends and family, and then I would join the zombie apocalypse and become one of them so that I could live longer. Technically, you're dead. What? You're dead if you're a zombie. If a zombie apocalypse were to break out tomorrow, what would be the first three things that you would do? I would go home, grab some guns, and start shooting zombies. That's what I'm saying, America. If a zombie apocalypse were to break out, what would be the first three things that you would do? 
I would get my dog, get some food, and hide. And there you have it. <laughs> well, that does it for this edition of the Baker Beat. A lot of good answers. Looks like some are going to die. Looks like some will live. Back to you in the studio. Up next, we'll take a look at another chapter in our Countdown to Commencement series. But first, here's what's happening around campus. Baker football players have received attention for their participation in recent NFL combines. For this week's roundtable, Brad Barnes sits down with head coach Mike Grossner and former Wildcats receiver Reggie Harris to discuss what it takes to get to the pros. Hello and welcome to the Baker Roundtable. The topic of discussion for today is the seven Baker football players who have spent their spring doing workouts at NFL combines across the country. Today I have Baker University head football coach Mike Grossner and Baker receiver Reggie Harris. Coach, first off, you don't hear a lot of news about NAIA players getting to that uh, NFL competition level. What does that say about this program and these players? Well, I, you know, these guys are motivated to continue and play football. It tells me a lot that uh, they enjoyed their experience at Baker. Mm -hmm. uh, we developed them pretty good, and they're, they're now going to attempt to take it to that next level. So, you know, I look at it as, hey, for our program, these guys are out there getting our school exposure, themselves some exposure, and hopefully a chance to continue and play ball. But also it tells me we're recruiting pretty good football players. You know, if we've got seven kids out there attempting to make some type of league, uh, we're, we're doing a good job of profiling guys and developing them. And one of those football players is Reggie Harris. And Reggie, you uh, spent some time at the Chiefs Pro Day. Uh, and did a little bit of, uh, of work out there. Tell me about that experience. It was definitely a surreal experience. I mean, as a kid growing up, you always watch your favorite hometown team, and when you actually get to go to their practice facility, it's just kind of, you know, breathtaking. But at the same time, you realize you're there to make a statement, and I think I did that quite well. Now, you got to see Division One players, Division Two players. How do you feel you and your teammates stack up against those athletes? Well, I think that people shouldn't be, you know, judging our abilities based on our division because especially at that Chiefs combine, the Chicago combine that I went to, there were a lot of athletes there that were just as, you know, athletic and talented as I was. There were obviously some better and some worse, but you know, you couldn't really tell what division we all were in based on our abilities. So that was good to know. Check out the entire roundtable discussion. Go to youtube.com backslash bakerumedia. With four weeks until graduation, we spotlight another senior who has plans after he walks across the stage. But this senior's road to a college degree hasn't been easy. Nick Williams has more. For this week's countdown to commencement, I focus on a young man that struggled growing up, but he didn't let that stop him. Live life to the fullest, every day at a time, no regrets. Many know the name Martin McDonald, very outgoing young man who always has a smile on his face. But what people may not know is the struggle behind that smile. Martin grew up in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Mother and father walked out on him at the age three. He had a few key people in his life, one of which was his grandfather. He took us in instead of retiring. He took me, my little brother, and my sister in and you know, he raised us, so he's a big part of my life, the reason why I'm here. A devastating knee injury in high school threw all chances of playing Division I ball out the window, but the light at the end of the tunnel shined on Baker University. He's at the weight room every morning at 6 a.m., and he takes his aggression and anger out on the weights. You know, you always got something going on in your life, you know, where it's homework, you know, 
people just, you know, messing with you or whatever it is. You know, just having a stress reliever, which is my the weight room with me. You know, I can just take it all out on that, come out relieved. He volunteers to help friends of his in the exercise category. He strives so far in his life that it just makes you want to do it yourself. And I've always had that feeling in my mind that I've wanted to be big and get better. And Martin's my way to ticket to do it. On May 19, 2013, Martin will be the first person in his family to graduate with a college degree and hopes his story inspires at least one person to keep going despite their struggles. There's always going to be negativity in your life, you know what I'm saying? So just turn that negative energy into positive energy, you know, and do something great with it. Nick Williams, KMBU TV. Martin's grandfather passed away while he was 16. That's when he was taken in by his adopted parents, Jamie and Cheryl Sims. To this day, Martin has not spoken to or seen his biological mother or father. That'll do it for this week's edition of the Wildcat Watch. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.